Thomas and the Jet Plane. Thomas the tank engine loves having buffers and a boiler that bubbles. He loves having wheels and a whistle that toots. But most of all, Thomas loves working on the Fat Controller's Railway. It was the day of the Sodor summer picnic. The Fat Controller came with news of a special for Thomas. You are to collect the children from the airport and take them to the picnic. He boomed cheerfully. <whistles> Thomas was excited. He set off right away. The airport was new and all the engines wanted to go there. Soon Thomas arrived at the airport. He was excited to see the control tower the huge hangar and the red and white striped windsock. Then he heard a loud noise in the sky. A jet plane was coming in to land. Thomas thought it looked very splendid. Thomas chuffed over to the hangar. Hello, peeped Thomas. I'm Thomas and I'm a tank engine. Hello, said the plane. I'm Jeremy and I'm a jet plane. It must be wonderful being able to fly, said Thomas. It is, said Jeremy. I can go anywhere I want. Flying is the most fun in the world. Thomas thought Jeremy was being boastful. I like travelling on tracks, Thomas huffed. I puff past farms and villages and see all the wonderful sights of Sodor. Well, from the air, I see the wonderful sights of Sodor all at once, said Jeremy. Thomas felt upset. Then he saw the children. They were waiting on the platform. Thomas wished quickly over to collect them. I never want to talk to a jet plane again, he huffed. Thomas puffed over to the picnic. He was happy to leave the airport behind. But when he turned a bend in the track, he had to stop at a signal. Thomas heard Jeremy taking off, and then Jeremy flew right over his funnel. It's not fair, huffed Thomas. Jet planes don't have to stop at signals. Thomas puffed past the windmill, but Thomas could still see Jeremy. He was now high in the sky. Suddenly, Thomas saw a cow on the tracks in front of him. Jet planes don't have to stop for cows, Thomas puffed sadly. Thomas arrived at the picnic. The blankets were laid out and everyone was having a jolly time. But Percy thought Thomas looked sad. Jet planes can go wherever they like. I wish I were a jet plane, chuffed Thomas. But engines can pull carriages and take children to picnics, peeped Percy. <laughs> engines are really useful. But Thomas wasn't sure. Jeremy was jetting to the mainland. But dark rain clouds were gathering. and Jeremy had to return to the airport. Oh. 
Thomas was passing the airport as Jeremy came in to land. Thomas didn't want to talk to him, but Jeremy called out, Thomas, a summer storm is on its way. The children's picnic will be ruined. Cinders and ashes, gasped Thomas. I must tell the fat controller. Thomas reached the picnic just in time. Quick, tooted Thomas. There's a big storm coming. The picnic will be washed away. Everyone packed up the picnic as quickly as possible. And then they boarded Annie and Clarabel. The children were sad the picnic was over. Then another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. He puffed quickly back to the airport. This time, Thomas wanted to talk to Jeremy. Please, can the children have their picnic in your hangar? Of course, said Jeremy. What a splendid idea. Thomas was very happy. Soon, all the children were having a jolly time. And so was the fat controller. Well done, Thomas and Jeremy, he boomed. Together, you have saved the picnic. You are both really useful. Jeremy was happy to have helped. And Thomas had never felt prouder to be a steam engine. A smooth ride. Sir Handel is one of the oldest engines on the island of Sodor. He's a dark blue colour and has a small number three painted on his side. Sir Handel is also known as one of the smoothest engines on the Thin Controllers Railway. Sir Handel had been working in the stone quarry all summer. The Thin Controller, Mr Percival, was happy to see him back. I've got a special for you, Mr Percival told Sir Handel. I want you to collect some trucks of apples. You must pull them very carefully or the apples will bruise. Yes, sir, whooshed Sir Handel, and off he chuffed. At the orchard, Sir Handel was coupled to the trucks. He pulled them away very carefully. He pulled them around the lake, across the stone bridge, and he started to puff up a hill. Then there was trouble. His pistons popped, his traction rods rattled, and his boiler bubbled and bounced. Sir Handel couldn't go on. Peter Sam puffed up behind him. He was worried. Why have you stopped, Sir Handel? He whistled. I have a problem, wished Sir Handel sadly. It happens when I go up hills. I start to rattle and rock, and then I have to stop. Peter Sam felt sorry for his friend. Could you help me up the hill? Puffed Sir Handel. Of course I can. Peter Sam, and he pushed Sir Handel and the trucks of apples all the way up the hill. When Sir Handel arrived at the station, the thing controller was very pleased. There's not one bruise on those apples, said the thing controller. What a smooth engine you are. Sir Handel was happy that the Thin Controller was pleased, so he didn't tell the Thin Controller about his problem. Now I have another special for you, said the Thin Controller. I want you to pick up sheep from the farm. Yes, sir, puffed Sir Handel, but he was worried. When Sir Handel arrived at the farm, the farmer was waiting. 
Be careful, said the farmer. Sheep need a smooth ride. Yes, sir, chuffed Sir Handel, and he puffed away. But soon Sir Handel came to another hill. His pistons popped, his traction rods rattled, and his boiler bubbled and bounced. Sir Handel couldn't go on. This time, Duncan puffed up behind him. Sir Handel told him all about his problem. Duncan was happy to help. With Duncan's help, Sir Handel delivered the sheep safely to their new field. When Sir Handel arrived at the transfer yards, the Thin Controller and Mrs Percival were waiting. The Thin Controller was very pleased with Sir Handel's work. Now he had a surprise special for him. Today is my wife's birthday, said the Thin Controller. You are to take us to the top of Caldy Fell for a picnic. Yes, sir, puffed Sir Handel. But he knew that the track to Caldy Fell was very steep. Sir Handel was more worried than ever. Sir Handel puffed towards Caldy Fell. The track was even steeper than he remembered. I can do it, I can do it, to the top, to the top, he chuffed. Then there was trouble. His pistons popped and his traction rods rattled. Inside the carriage, the picnic hamper burst open and the Thin Controller and Mrs Percival were juddered and shuddered. Sir Handel shuddered to a stop. The Thin Controller was worried for his engine. You're a fine engine, Sir Handel, but you're no longer a smooth engine, he said. I'll have to send you back to the stone quarry. That's the place for bumpy engines. Please, sir, I can be a smooth engine. I only shudder and shake when I go up hills, Sir Handel wished. The Thin Controller listened. I see, he said. Please don't send me back to the stone quarry. The Thin Controller made a telephone call. He looked very serious. Later, Sir Handel was helped back to the transfer yards by Mighty Mac. Sir Handel was very worried. He was sure that the Thin Controller was going to send him back to the quarry. Sir Handel arrived at the transfer yards. He saw Thomas. Hello, Sir Handel, tooted Thomas. Sir Handel? I've asked a special engineer to come and fix you, smiled the Thin Controller. You're a special engine and you need special attention. Sir Handel smiled from buffer to buffer. He had never felt happier. Sir Handel was soon fixed and now he could chuff cheerfully up Caldy Fell. The children in his carriages whooped and cheered. Sir Handel gave the smoothest ride of all. Follow that flower. Every day is a busy day for the engines of the Thin Controller's Railway. They toot hello as they pass each other on the hills. Puff and puff at the transfer yards and push and pull trucks at the wharf. Early one morning, Thomas was at the wharf. He liked the wharf. It was busy and he met a lot of friends there. But today, Thomas was shunting trucks and the trucks were being especially troublesome. It was taking all of Thomas's puff to keep them in order. Then, James arrived. I am to collect a truck of flour to make cakes and bread for the children's harvest festival supper, tooted James. 
I wish the Fat Controller had given me that job, chuffed Thomas. It would be much more fun than shunting trucks. James was feeling very pleased with himself. First, I have to take on water, he whistled grandly. Please, shunt the flower truck over for me, Thomas. Thomas didn't want to shunt any more trucks. This meant his job would go on for even longer. Bossy boiler, he puffed. Thomas found a flower truck outside the warehouse. He wanted to move James's truck as quickly as he could, so Thomas wasn't taking care. He biffed the truck very hard, and the door came loose. But Thomas didn't see. An idea had flown into his funnel. I'll hide James's truck, then Bossy Boiler will have to find me. Thomas thought hide-and-seek was a grand idea. James came back from the water tower. He saw Thomas in the distance. And James saw that falling from the truck was a trail of flour. Stop, Thomas! whistled James. Flour is falling out of your truck! But Thomas was too far away to hear. Thomas puffed into the warehouse to find somewhere to hide. More and more flour fell from the truck. James chased after Thomas. Thomas heard him coming. How does he know where I am? thought Thomas. Thomas, the flour, whistled James. But Thomas couldn't hear him. James won't find me this time, he thought. Thomas was having fun. Thomas found another good place to hide. James will never find me here, he hooted happily. But then he heard James's whistle again. Bust my buffers, chuffed Thomas. He's found me again. So Thomas puffed off. Thomas had reversed behind some trucks. James will never find me here, he tooted cheerily. But just then, he saw James come around the bend. Thomas, puffed James. He was very cross. You've left a trail of flour all over the wharf. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. I must have biffed the truck so hard that the door came loose. Thomas didn't feel cheery anymore. If I've lost all the flour, there'll be no cakes and bread for the children's harvest festival supper, he wished sadly. I'm sorry, James, he chuffed. I'll get you another truck of flour. Then you won't be late for the children. Thomas raced away. Thomas puffed and he huffed, he wished and he whooshed. He had to get to the mill as fast as he could. Then there was trouble. When Thomas arrived at the mill, it was closed. Thomas looked around. He could only see empty flower trucks. Thomas felt sadder than ever. Dusty Dave the miller came to see Thomas. He could see that Thomas was very upset. I'm going home for my tea now, he told Thomas. But there's one full flower truck right at the back. Thomas saw the flower truck. But there were lots of other trucks in the way. He needed help. Thomas whooshed back to the wharf. He would have to ask James to help him. James was waiting. He was still very cross. Thomas pulled up alongside him. James, I know you tried to tell me about the flower, and I know I was silly, but now I need your help. James knew that Thomas was sorry, and he knew Thomas needed his help. So they set off for the mill. James and Thomas worked hard. 
There were lots of trucks to shunt, but they worked well together. The flower truck was coupled up to James, and he raced off. Thomas felt proud of his friend. Later that evening, the fat controller stood by a table of wonderful breads and cakes. The children were very excited. Thomas puffed by on his way home. Well done, James, he tooted, and James tooted back. Thomas was pleased James was his friend again. And Thomas smiled all the way back to Tidmouth Sheds. Percy and the Fun Fair. It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sodor. All the engines were very excited. It was the day of the Fat Controller's Fun Fair. Children would be coming from far and wide. There was to be a special visit from the Chinese dragon. Percy was delighted. He thought the Chinese dragon was the most exciting thing of all. The Fat Controller arrived at Tidmouth. He had come to give the engines their jobs. Edward was to pull the merry-go-round, Henry the roller coaster, Gordon the fairground folk, Toby the bumper cars. James and Emily were to pull the Ferris wheel, and Chomish, boomed the fat controller, you are to collect the fireworks and the Chinese dragon. What's my job, sir? asked Percy, hopefully. You are to collect coal from the coaling plant. You must fill all the hoppers at the stations, ordered the Fat Controller. A railway can't run without coal, he added. This is a very important job. The Fat Controller left and all the engines were excited. All except Percy. Coal, he sighed. And as he watched his friends leave for their exciting jobs, Percy felt very left out. Percy chuffed sadly over to the coal plant. This didn't feel like an important job at all. When Percy arrived, he could see a long line of trucks. I wish I was pulling something exciting grumbled Percy. Not bought an old coal trucks. Percy buffered up and pulled out of the depot. Percy stopped at a signal by a school. Toby puffed past pulling flatbeds full of bumper cars. The children in the playground clapped and cheered. Then Edward chuffed by with the merry-go-round. The children cheered even louder. Percy thought that Toby and Edward were having a wonderful time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. Maybe Toby and Edward need some help. Helping friends is much more important than delivering coal, he wished. So Percy didn't deliver the coal. He left his trucks and he steamed after his friends as quickly as he could. Toby and Edward stopped at a red signal. Percy puffed up alongside. Do you need any help? He tooted, hopefully. No, thank you, Percy, said Toby. We can do it, chuffed Edward. Percy was disappointed. Further up the line, Percy saw Emily and James. They were taking the Ferris wheel. That looks like fun, tooted Percy. I'm sure they'll need some help. Percy caught up with James and Emily. This is going to be the biggest wheel ever, chirruped Emily. 
Emily and James were having a splendid time. But James and Emily didn't need help either. Percy was upset. Then Percy saw Gordon waiting at a junction. Gordon was pulling the fairground folk, but he didn't need any help either. Percy saw Henry crossing the bridge. Henry was happily pulling the roller coaster. Finally, Percy saw Thomas waiting at a signal. He was carrying the fireworks and the Chinese dragon. That looks like the most fun of all, gasped Percy. But even Thomas didn't need any help. Percy was more disappointed than ever. Then there was trouble. Percy had spent so much time trying to help that he hadn't delivered any coal. Percy saw James. He looked very sad. There's no coal at the stations, he wished. We've all run out of coal. Boss my boiler, cried Percy. If the engines don't get some coal, the funfair won't open. All the children will be sad and it's all my fault. Percy knew what he had to do. He had to pick up his trucks and deliver the coal as quickly as he could. Percy wished all over the island delivering coal to his friends. Soon, everyone's boiler was bubbling and their pistons were pounding. The engines were back on track. The funfair was ready just in time. Percy finished his last delivery of coal and arrived at the funfair as the fireworks began. The rocket soared. The band played and the Chinese dragon danced. All the children were delighted. The fat controller was right, tooted Percy. Delivering the coal is a very important job. Duncan drops a clangor. It was a busy time on the narrow-gauge railway. It was the day of the country fair. The little engines puffed through the forests and valleys, getting ready for the big day. Rusty was taking trucks full of flowers. Peter Sam was taking pumpkins. And Duncan had a very special job to do. He had to collect the big bell from the clock tower to be polished. On the way, Duncan puffed along an old and bumpy track. It was his favorite part of the railway. Each day, Duncan would rattle along the tracks. He enjoyed the sound his wheels made. Duncan raced backwards and forwards, rattling and clattering over the bumps. Reneus chuffed up. Duncan, you're going to be late, he peeped. But Duncan didn't hear Reneus. His wheels were clattering and rattling too loudly. When Duncan finally arrived at the transfer yards, he was very late and the foreman was cross. Workmen were waiting with a large wooden frame. Inside was the big bell. The bell chimed cheerfully as it was loaded onto Duncan's flatbed. 
What a wonderful sound, peeped Duncan. Remember, said the foreman sternly, the bell is very heavy. The track to the polishers is old and in need of some repair. You must go slowly and carefully. But Duncan wasn't listening to the foreman. He was enjoying the chiming of the bell. Duncan chuffed along the track to the polishers. As he puffed through the mountains, his wheels started to clatter. And the bell started to chime. Duncan went faster. The bell chimed louder. With every bump and bend, it rattled and rang, it tinkled and clanged. Duncan liked the sound of this even more than the sound of his wheels. He was having a wonderful time. Whee! He wished, and the bell rang louder and louder. Slow down, called Rusty. But Duncan didn't hear. Hooray! Duncan hooted. Take care, chuffed Scarlowy. Whoosh! whooped Duncan. The bell will come loose, puffed Mighty Mac. But still Duncan didn't listen. He rattled on. The track was getting bumpier and the bell chimed louder. Sir Handel was taking on water. He saw Duncan racing towards him. Hooray! whistled Duncan. Slow down, hooted Sir Handel. The track ahead is very wobbly. Listen to my bell, Sir Handel, whooshed Duncan. Isn't it wonderful? Then there was trouble. Duncan's wheels rattled over the wobbly track. He applied his brakes, but it was too late. The flatbed bumped into the air, the bell tumbled off the flatbed and rolled down the hill. Clang, clang, boing went the bell as it fell and fell. Oh no, cried Duncan. I've lost the bell. Now it won't be polished for the country fair, he puffed sadly. It's all my fault. Everywhere was still and quiet. Then Duncan heard a noise. That sounds like a bell, he wished quietly, and he listened very hard. It is a bell, he tooted. It's my bell. Maybe if I listen and follow the sound, Duncan puffed, I will find the bell. Duncan followed the sound. It's getting louder, he puffed excitedly. At last, Duncan could see the bell. It was caught in a tree. The wind blew gently and the bell chimed sweetly. Duncan raced down the hill and he arrived just in time. The branch snapped and the bell fell onto his flatbed. Hooray! chuffed Duncan. He was very happy. Duncan puffed to the polishers. This time he puffed slowly and carefully, just as he had been told. Soon the bell was polished and Duncan chuffed slowly and carefully all the way back to the transfer yard. Duncan delivered the shiny bell just in time. And when the clock chimed for the opening of the country fair, Duncan thought it was the best sound he had ever heard.